Hey guys, today we'll be covering a 2021 romance miniseries called Married First, Then Fell in Love. The opening scene begins with a girl named Song Ong Kion on the phone with her mother, saying that she'll soon reach the hospital. But just then, two men appear and kidnap her. When she wakes up, she finds herself lying on the couch of a huge mansion tied with ropes. Then, a guy named Chu Fei Yuan approaches Song and reminds her that he had asked her to have their marriage contract annulled within five days, but she has failed. Initially, Song appears perplexed, but after a bit of thinking, she realizes that she was the one who texted her earlier. She agrees to cancel the marriage contract, prompting him to finally let her free. Song then goes to the hospital where her younger brother is being treated. When she arrives, her mother Jing informs her that she has arranged for her to marry Chu. Song immediately refuses, claiming that she cannot marry someone she has never met. However, Jing pressures her to marry him because Chu comes from a very wealthy family and has offered a dowry of 20 million. She further mentions that marrying him will help them pay off all their debts and cover her brother's medical expenses. When Song still refuses, Jing emotionally blackmails her. Distraught, Song returns to Chu's place and reveals that her mother absolutely wants her to marry him. Hearing this, Chu approaches her and mentions that if she wants to marry him, he should also do his job as a husband. He then tries to kiss her forcibly, prompting her to slap him. Just then, Song tells Chu that her stomach is aching, so he checks her temperature and tells her to follow him. He then offers her a hot drink, which makes her feel better. After this, Chu instructs her to prepare some food, so she starts making some noodles. When he realizes that she made the noodles only for him, Chu goes to the kitchen and gets another one for her, making her happy. Later, Song is about to leave when it begins to rain, so she decides to stay at his house for a while. She falls asleep on the couch and dreams of Chu approaching her. Shortly after, she awakens to find Chu sitting beside her in the same way as in her dream. He appears to be inebriated and soon falls asleep on Song's lap. She tries to push him away but fails, and as a result, they end up sleeping in the same position. The next morning, Chu wakes up and notices Song, prompting him to get up quickly. He asks what she's doing, to which she responds that he was the one who got drunk and invasively slept on her lap. In the next scene, Song, who works in a coffee shop, arrives a few minutes late for work. As a result, her co-worker, Jiachi, yells at her, expressing her annoyance at always having to pick up her slack. Song apologizes for her tardiness, claiming that she was caught up in something. A few moments later, Chu arrives at the coffee shop and drags her out for a talk. He then walks her to his car and asks why she's bothering him. She responds that she, too, is a victim. Regardless, he forces her to call off the wedding, to which she responds that she will do something. Later, Song visits the hospital and tells her mother of her decision to call off the wedding. Jing reveals that she has already accepted the dowry and has used some of it to pay off her brother's medical bills. This shocks Song, but she responds that she has started a job and promises to cover all of her brother's medical expenses. Elsewhere, Chu's father and grandmother pay him a visit. When the grandmother inquires about his intended wife, Chu exclaims that he won't marry her. This upsets the old woman, and she starts manipulating him by pleading that she wants to see him married before she dies. However, Chu says nothing and walks away, pretending to be busy. The next day, Chu goes to the coffee shop to pick up Song. However, Jiachi claims that Song will be fired if she leaves without finishing her work. Surprisingly, Chu instructs Jiachi to pack up all the items because he wants to buy them all. He then tells Song that her work is finished and takes her home. Upon arriving, he hands her a couple rule agreement, stating that the husband is always correct and that she will never argue back. Initially, Song refuses to sign it, prompting Chu to ask for his 20 million back. He also pulls her closer and tells her that he now has the right to be intimate with her. Having no other option, Song agrees and signs the paper. After this, he informs her that their wedding is in three days and warns her not to cause any problems. Before leaving, Chu asks if she has any requests from him, to which she replies that she doesn't want him to make any physical contact with her. She also asks the same question, and Chu simply replies that she must be loyal to him. A few days later, they get married and return home. Song requests Chu to let her sleep in their living room, but the latter refuses, asserting that she must sleep in the bedroom. When she tries to revolt, he reminds her of the contract, forcing her to agree. The next day, Song is about to leave for work when Chu informs her that he will pick her up and drop her off. After work, they drive to his parents' house, and upon reaching there, Chu introduces Song to his father, Chong Ming. He claims that Chong Ming is the same person who arranged their marriage against their will. Chong Ming appears pleased to meet her and transfers three million into her account as a wedding gift. At the same time, Chu's sister Chao walks in and berates Song for asking for money on their first meeting. After learning that she comes from a poor family, Chiao continues to insult Song. Chu and the father chastise her for her impudence, but she persists. According to Chiao, Song married her brother for money and she doesn't belong in their family. Having heard enough, Chong Ming slaps his daughter and orders her to go to her room. But before leaving, the arrogant girl pushes Song, 
causing her to fall and get injured. After the eventful meeting, Chu carries his wife to the car and drives her back home. Upon reaching, he lovingly massages her feet and tells her not to be afraid, because the more she is afraid, the more hurtful others will be. Furthermore, he says he can't stand to see anyone bullying her. He then moves closer to her and Song closes her eyes, expecting him to kiss her. However, he simply reminds her to make breakfast for him the next day. At midnight, Song notices Chu sleepwalking and leads him to her room. He abruptly awakens and asks as to why she's luring him to bed. Song reveals that he was sleepwalking, but he doesn't believe her and tries to get intimate with her. Furious, she bites his neck, reminding him of his promise not to be physical with her. However, he dismisses her and warns her not to do anything similar in the future. The next day at work, Jiachi questions Song about why she is working on her day off. Song, who is clearly agitated by her co-worker, doesn't reply. This angers Jiachi, so she intentionally spills some cream on the floor and blames Song. As a result, the store manager chastises her for her carelessness, claiming that there's now no cream left in stock. The innocent Song can't speak a word, so she simply apologizes and starts crying. In the midst of all of this, she receives several calls from her husband, which she ignores. A little while later, Chu arrives at the coffee shop and finds her crying. When asked, Song explains everything to him. Hearing this, he tells her to return to work, ensuring that he'll solve the issue. In the evening, a cream company's owner personally visits the coffee shop with a bag full of cream. Seeing this, the store manager is taken aback and quickly offers him a seat out of respect. Instead, the owner asks about Song and expresses his delight at being able to assist her. As soon as the owner leaves, the store manager approaches Song and begins speaking to her respectfully. It is revealed that Chu planned everything for Song's happiness. After work, he takes Song to his father's place and introduces her to his grandmother. As soon as the old lady sees her, she checks out her body and mentions that giving birth will be a breeze. However, this only makes Song feel awkward, prompting her to make up an excuse and walk out of the room. She then places her bag on a couch and heads to the restroom. Just then, the cunning Chiao appears and places her earrings in Song's bag. In the next scene, the newly married couple is about to leave when Chiao stops them and slaps Song. She then accuses Song of stealing her earrings and demands that she be reprimanded. However, Song claims she's innocent. Enraged with the commotion, Chu grabs the earrings and decides to have its fingerprints checked. He also considers calling the police, which makes Chiao nervous. As a result, she stops him, claiming that she just realized the earrings aren't hers. She also apologizes to Song, pretending that it was all a misunderstanding. But when she is about to flee, her brother stops her and orders Song to slap her back. However, the innocent Song refuses, letting Chiao go. Shortly after, when the couple reaches the car, Chu tells his wife to be strong and fight back if required. Song simply thanks him and also kisses him on the cheek, leaving him speechless. The next day, the chairman of the coffee franchise, Mr. Shen, personally visits Song's coffee shop to meet her. It is revealed that he was Song's teacher in the past. As the two chat, Mr. Chen reveals that he saw Song's name on his employee list and decided to see her. Before parting ways, he also promises to invite her for dinner someday. Surprisingly, as soon as Mr. Shen leaves, the arrogant and brash Jiachi starts being nice to Song. The same evening, Song heads to her house only to find her mother packing everything in order to move to a bigger apartment. Perplexed, she advises Jing to save money as their current apartment is adequate. However, the latter starts lecturing Song, saying that she can spend the money however she wants. She further explains that the money is her reward for raising Song for 20 years and selling her to a wealthy family. Jing also warns her that if she divorces Chu, she won't be able to see her family again. The outburst hurts Song, causing her to leave the place in tears. On the way, she is approached by Chu, who asks her if she was bullied again. She explains everything to him, and because of which, he embraces her tightly. Later that night, Song asks him not to divorce her for the time being because she won't be able to see her mother and brother if he does. Hearing this, Chu expresses his support for her and encourages her to remain strong. He then asks her to rest while he walks out and calls his father to learn more about the marriage agreement between the two families. On the call, Chong Ming reveals that Song's mother demanded 20 million for the marriage, and now, if they divorce, she will sell her daughter to another wealthy individual. He also sends a copy of the agreement to his son. After reading the contract, Chu gets angry and heads straight to Jing's home. Upon arriving there, he speaks with Jing, reminding her that the contract states that if he divorces Song, her mother must return all of the money. He then tells her to apologize to her daughter, or else he will make sure she is left with nothing. The following day, Jing, who is terrified of being broke again, apologizes to Song, making her happy and confused at the same time. In the next scene, Song is preparing dinner when Chu walks in. She informs him that they're having fish for dinner. Hearing this, he loses his temper and yells at her, questioning her intentions. 
He inquires as to who told her to buy fish and whether she intends to harm him. He then begins stabbing the fish cruelly, scaring her. The same night, Song dreams of Chu attempting to kill her with a knife. Soon after, she awakens and finds him in front of her. This startles Song, but Chu somehow manages to calm her down. He then asks if she had a nightmare, but Song responds that what she witnessed earlier in the kitchen wasn't a dream. Surprisingly, she then asks that he file for divorce. The next day after work, Song is approached by her teacher Shen, who offers her a position as manager at his new branch. She learns that he is doing her a favor, so she declines the offer, claiming that she prefers to earn the post with her hard work. Hearing this, he touches her head and nose, claiming she hasn't changed. Chu, who is standing outside the coffee shop, sees this and becomes enraged. Meanwhile, Song trips over something, prompting Shen to rescue her. He then tries to express his feelings for her, but just then, Chu arrives. He addresses her as his wife and attempts to kiss her in front of Shen. As expected, this enrages Song, so she pushes him away, claiming that she's not a toy. Seeing this, Shen tells Chu that if he can't bring her happiness, he should let her go. But Song replies back that she is happy with her marriage. The movie ends as Song approaches a distraught Chu and asks him to take her home.